And here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in here today. I hope the last couple of presentations have started to pique your interest, get you thinking of those next steps. What does AI look like for your organization? How are you going to start adopting it? Um, really, our next set of discussions is focused on your success with Copilot. I think you're going to find Copilot is so easy to pick up and use. But at the same time, you're going to find that there is a little bit of a skill to develop here just to get the most out of Copilot and really AI tools in general. And that skill is really called prompt engineering or how to use Copilot better. And I could probably use the AI to help me with my catchphrasing there, but I think that'll do for now. Uh, and with that, I can crack straight into it. But before I get too deep into things, I want to share a quick quote from HackerOne. They're a cybersecurity organization, and they say, whether you believe AI is a threat or an opportunity, you are correct. And I like how they summarize it here. It's kind of poking the fun, uh, fun at the fact that both can be true. It can be sick, scary. It can be exciting at the same time, but it really highlights the need to stay on top of new technologies. I think this is a message that we've carried through this presentation. You need to know how they're going to start to influence our respective businesses. Uh, how does this really uh, uh, relate to prompt engineering? Um, well, it's important that we acknowledge these threats and that we're prepared for them. But in the vein of prompt engineering, it's extremely important that we don't shy away from new tech and that we're able to know enough about it so that we can capitalize on that new technology and get the most out of it. And that's what we're really going to try and get out of prompt engineering here today. Couple of agenda items. These are the core three things I'm really going to focus on here this morning with prompt engineering. The first is better prompts, better results. So this is really us discovering how to create those better prompts. It's really a story of you get out what you put in. Uh, next up is Copilot Studio. I have some great information I'm going to share on that near the end of the presentation, and then we'll cap things out with a quick video on future prompting. That's all looking pretty exciting. But as we jump into this, we want to talk about prompt engineering and, and really what is it? You know, this is the skill that influences how you speak to Copilot and really AI in general. Um, but there's a couple of key underpinnings here. The first is the best is just remembering the best results of Copilot interactions. They come from direct informed phrases and queries with feedback. And if I was to break that down for you, it really comes down to telling Copilot exactly what you're looking for, being very clear with what your, your, your aim or your goal is. And we're going to explore this a lot more here today, but also remembering that you have the ability to uh, give it feedback, give it information to add context, steered in the right direction. You definitely have the power here. And the next underpinning is really thinking of Copilot as an inspiration tool. When you're stuck, it'll help you learn through feedback and in turn, it'll start provide more relevant results. And I love whenever we talk about inspiration uh, tools like this is uh, again, some messaging we really carry forward with, uh, you know, enhancing your day with Copilot is, um, you know, thinking of all the times you've sat there and you're looking at a, a blank Word or Excel document and you have a task to accomplish and, you know, you can use Copilot in these situations to really kickstart you and get you moving along, get that inspiration through that conversation with Copilot. I think that's really awesome. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to dive into and dig into really deep here. But before I do, I want to share a quick video with you here next. And this is really going to set the stage of exploring exactly what is a prompt. And then we'll recap that for after that. I'm going to play the next video. Microsoft Copilot will help you achieve things like never before. All you need is a prompt. And a prompt is simply how you ask Copilot to do something for you. Summarize this paper into three key points. That's a prompt. Add slides for visiting Waikiki and Diamond Head to this presentation. That's a prompt. Draft an email to the boss asking to replace our broken printer. Please write in a professional tone and suggest alternative solutions. You got it. You can put a little or a lot into a prompt. All you need is a clear goal. Most prompts you give Copilot will probably fit into one of these five categories. Create. Say you want a quick first draft of a document, presentation, or email. Edit. 
maybe you need to add a new slide in PowerPoint or have Copilot rewrite a Word doc in a different tone. Understand, like if your Excel chart could use a visual explainer or to identify key arguments in a doc. Ask, maybe there's a specific detail that Copilot can help find, a name, a date, or reference to an old project. Finally, catch up. To get up to speed on that Microsoft Teams meeting you missed, or for help with an overwhelming Outlook inbox. Copilot to the rescue. Keeping these five categories in mind will help kickstart ideas for prompting Copilot. And that first prompt is really just the start of a conversation. Follow up with Copilot to edit a long paragraph down, add more details, or simply regenerate a new result. Remember, all a prompt needs is a clear goal, but the more details and direction you can provide, the better Copilot can meet your needs. Pretty soon, you'll be prompting like a pro. Perfect, prompting like a pro, I love it. Maybe that's my new catchphrase. Now, the next two slides are part of a digital handout packet that we'll be able to provide to you guys. But while I have you here, let's dig into this a little bit more. Um, the first one I wanna touch on really is telling Copilot what you need. And that was really iterated nicely in that last video there. So give it some objectives, give it some goals. There's a couple of great examples up on screen here right now, like maybe transforming a document, uh, we're gonna summarize information or even catching up on missed items. These are a couple of, of objectives or goals that even I use on a regular basis that can be really helpful. The other part of this too is including uh, uh, the right prompt ingredients. So like any great recipe, there's some key ingredients and we should understand why they're there. Uh, in this case, we're dealing with four. Uh, we have our goal of our prompt, we have our context, our source and our expectations. Goal, really we're covering that already. This is the thing that we're trying to accomplish. Great example, very clear example up on screen right now, generating three to five bullet points. There's a nice easy goal. Context gives us the opportunity to add a little bit more information. So maybe we want to speak to a specific client or we want to reference uh, a certain project. This is our chance to give Copilot a little bit more information in our prompt so it knows exactly where to go, what it's looking for, and what we're trying to accomplish. So adding context, that's a big one. The third one is source. Now, this is a really powerful one of having an AI assistant inside of your Office 365 environment, because with source, you have the ability to reference documents that you yourself have permission to. So you can send Copilot out and look for information that exists within your 365 environment that might be a Word document that resides in SharePoint, or the example in this prompt right now is telling your co-pilots to go reference some communication that resides inside of your email or Teams chats. Uh, it just, again, gives Copilot a little bit more information to build out that prompt and being able to reference that source information is really, really powerful. And then finally, the last ingredient is setting an expectation for your prompt. Now, this can be something like setting a tone, uh, something that you expect Copilot to kind of respond in. So maybe a tone, something like a little bit more formal, maybe be a bit more professional or even the expectation up on screen here in this example is a really good one, just using simple language so I can get up to speed a bit more quickly. And really the second half of this handout is a couple more really great key points is number three, keeping that conversation going. So this is really referencing that, uh, that building that conversation uh, with the co-pilot, being able to add more information and context as you work to tailor that final result. So some great, some more great examples up on screen here right now, stuff like storytelling assistance or even translating languages can be a really, really awesome thing to keep that, uh, that co-pilot busy. And then finally, some helpful hints to kind of wrap the, the tips off here is things like knowing Copilot's limitations. So, you know, knowing that Copilot is limited to the information that you give it, that's what it's working with. So ensure to give it as much information as you possibly can. Uh, something like communicate clearly. So Copilot is better able to interpret information if you're using uh, clear, concise language, punctuation, grammar, and capitalization. Uh, and the last is, 
yeah, that I'll call out here is being professional. Using polite language can actually improve Copilot's responses. Um, and in the event of the AI uprising, I mean, hey, you'll have been nice to it anyways. So I'll jump back here. And so I think we've we've gone on a nice journey here to understand exactly what is a prompt and some helpful tint, uh, hints around uh, what makes a good prompt. And what I want to do here next is take us on a little bit of a journey. Uh, we have a couple of example prompting situations here. Uh, we're going to try and create a document, but we're going to approach it in two different ways. We're going to be a bit more vague in the beginning and see what we get. And then we're going to uh, cap off that uh, this next example video and we're going to analyze our results and then we're going to jump into maybe a little bit of a better prompt. So with that, I'm going to play the next example and then we'll uh, jump back together and analyze what we get. All right, so let's review. We were a little bit vague in the beginning, but our objective was to build a how to getting started guide essentially with Copilot. Uh, and again, we were pretty vague with the prompt and how we started to generate that. And Copilot uh, made a couple of assumptions. So that's okay because we didn't really tell it specifically what we were trying to do, but it did end up creating a guide very specific for programmers. Now, Maybe our goal is to write a guide to more of a general audience. But again, we weren't really clear with that. So that's all right. Copilot did its best. It created that document, pulled it together. It gave some examples very specific and tailored to coding. Now, we're recapping here. We kind of missed the mark on that first prompt. It was a little bit vague, but let's, uh, let's, let's get uh, a better prompt put together here. So how about Let's make our prompt uh, a little bit more focused. We're going to say something along the lines of write me a document, how to use Copilot. This document should be used by anyone without a technical background and should showcase getting started and basic prompts to use. So why is this better than miss it than the miss the mark uh, prompt there? Well, for one, the purpose is a bit more clear. Second, our audience is identified. So we know who we're writing the document to, or really Copilot knows who it's writing the document to. And then finally, we've established some outcomes and we can align those with expectations. So Copilot is able to take this new information that we've given it. We're gonna take that and tell it to rewrite that document inside of uh, Microsoft Word. And uh, I'll run the next example video here. We're gonna see how it does, and then we'll analyze those results.
All right, awesome. Off to a bit of a better start there, and you can really see all of the power that uh, that we that we really put into that prompt that we get out of Copilot there in the end. That's a great example of us going in. We're rewriting the expectations. We're adding a little bit more context. We're giving Copilot a little bit more information about what we're trying to accomplish there. And the result you see in in real time is we're rewriting that inside of that Word document, and we have a a really great guide now that we can create. That was very quick. It was able to pull that information all together. It was much more accurate, and all it took was a few more words, you know, basically instructing Copilot on what we were really trying to accomplish. So I think those serve as some pretty great examples of kind of, you know, when you go in with a more specific objective and being able to add and prompt to a specific degree, you can get a result uh, very quickly and very accurately there as well. So let's kind of reconvene here at the end, a couple of do's and don'ts of prompting. So do, be specific and provide context. You should try and stay away from inputting short prompts where the direction could kind of go in any, any different direction, really. Maybe that's uh, useful for uh, being an inspiration source, but if you have an objective, be clear with it, be concise with what you're trying to get out of that with Copilot. Next, do. Uh, verify outputs. Don't you don't need to blindly accept those results. You are the champion and the master of this tool, so you get to decide if this is something that you want to use and uh, and go from there. And that really kind of works into providing feedback to tweak those results. You don't have to be okay with results. One of the greatest powers of having an AI assistant is being able to communicate and continue that chat along. So instructing it with feedback, you don't need to take the first result that you take. Uh, let it tweak, let it work with you, and, uh, and, and it'll take you to those objectives uh, a lot more accurately. Finally, do watch for new features. You should not stop ever learning about Microsoft uh, 365 Copilot. Um, this is a, a forefront technology, lots of things happening in this space, new features rolling out constantly. If something doesn't exist for you or your organization today, it very well could uh, soon enough. So always keep your, your eyes on the latest news in Copilot. And as I kind of wrap up prompt engineering, I'll, I'll leave it uh, with a, 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 a bit of a uh, kind of an interesting thought at the end here is really counterintuitively, your most seasoned leaders might actually be the best positioned people, um, even more so than your junior people to manage AI. And it's kind of a funny thing to think about a little bit. And there's a few analogies that I could use to kind of explain this more, but um, the one that we've tossed around, I thought is actually kind of good is uh, AI in a lot of cases can be thought of as an intern who knows nothing, but can potentially move at the speed of light. So who really better to delegate AI than a, a well-seasoned employee in their role? So just something to kind of chew on there as you think about who might be your initial champions and helps you adopt that into your organization. Next up, I'd like to share with you another nice document that was uh, uh, put up by Microsoft. And these are the day in the life documents here. And as I look back to when I initially jumped on to Copilot for the first time, uh, one of the challenges I even personally had was just figuring out where I could start to use it in my day to day which tasks or routines that I could start to implement it in. Um, and uh, it was a bit challenging at first. Uh, there was a lot of times where I might do something on a regular basis and I would jump straight into doing that task, but maybe I should have thought for a moment where I could maybe actually bring Copilot in to assist me, start to automate those things that I do on a regular basis. And uh, when we came across the day in the life uh, documents from Microsoft, this really kind of helped me uh, click in that space. Um, there's a, a, a great suite of these documents put out by Microsoft for all sorts of different de uh, departments or role uh, or whatever role you end up aligning with there. Um, in this case, we have Hillary. She's a financial analyst over at Contozo, and she's figured out a couple of ways to build Copilot into her day to day. Uh, 8 a.m. She sits down with a cup of coffee and an Excel sheet because who doesn't? And she's figured out a few ways that she can automate some tasks inside of Excel by leveraging Copilot. So that's great. There's a nice time saver right in the morning, makes it a bit easier to digest that Excel sheet. Uh, 9.30, she jumps into a Teams meeting and she uses a very powerful 
uh, Copilot Assistant feature to start um, uh, summarizing information that was uh, talked about inside of the meeting. She can go back and review those notes later. That's an awesome thing to have in your back pocket. And hey, at 11 a.m., she has to start making a PowerPoint presentation. She uses a really powerful feature of Copilot where she says, hey, look at this Word document convert it to a PowerPoint presentation, and then she can start building that pre presentation from there. So there's some great examples of some tasks, these uh, some things that Hillary might do in her day-to-day -day that she's started to save time in, she's been a little bit more efficient, and uh, she's able to use Copilot to get herself there. But it doesn't just stop with finance and Hillary. Uh, Copilot has all sorts of different prompts, and there's a couple of great examples up on screen here right now, whether you're in HR, your sales, your marketing, Copilot is able to bring things out of the box to you right off the bat. That's gonna be able to help you in these different departments or roles. Um, so some great examples there. Uh, definitely Copilot is gonna be able to tune in and start to, to uh, help you be, just be a little bit more efficient in your day to day. And as we wrap up, you know, prompt engineering and using Copilot in general, uh, one of the last things I like to touch on here, I'd like to touch on here is essentially Copilot Studio. Um, this is a really interesting uh, facet of Copilot. Um, and, you know, I won't spend too much time here right now because this is really something that might enter your Copilot journey a little bit later down the road. It's a little bit more advanced. So maybe you're you're into your Copilot adoption and it's going pretty well, but you ask yourself, where where do we take this next? What else can Copilot start to do for us? And that's where Copilot Studio can enter the situation. Uh, Studio uh, really allows you to start to develop your own Copilot enhancements. It starts to build your own Copilot LLMs based on data that you might already have inside of your organization. Um, really starts to help you build those out to enhance tasks that your team might do on a regular basis. Um, uh, with that, I want to play just a next quick video, just showcasing a little bit about Studio, building out those initial co-pilots, and a great example in this next video of a task that you might start to automate for uh, one of your teams as well. Perfect. Really interesting. That's a, a fascinating video always. You get to see an example of where you can start to build your own co-pilot and you can start to see studio in action. So I think that'll start to, to uh, add a couple of sparks to kind of where you see co-pilot might be going in the future. And uh, as we as I come across the, the last slide here of my presentation and before I hand the baton back over, I want to leave you with one really interesting video on the future of prompts. I think this is a fascinating one and uh, a way that we may end up interacting with Copilot in the not too distant future. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling about? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Hmm. From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video or maybe even a live stream. Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's going to be quite the professional production. 
is this announcement related to OpenAI, perhaps? It is. And in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement or that you are the announcement? Mm, me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI or more specifically about me as a part of open AI? You've got me on the edge of my, well, I don't really have a seat, but you get the idea. What's the big news? Yeah, we've got a new model that can interact with the world through audio, vision, and text. Awesome. Thanks so much, 